In this project, we studied uh, how in retailing environments, consumer multitask and how that impacts their shopping behavior, their shopping performance. Now you can imagine, right, these days, it's impossible to find a consumer without a phone in their hands. We go shopping with our phones, we eat with our phones, we do everything, speaking on the phone, texting, checking social media. So we wanted to explore how this interferes with people accomplishing their goals in a retail environment. Because multitasking research shows us that, you know, people can multitask, uh, they can divide their attention, they can select what they can they pay attention to, uh, and they can do multiple things at the same time. However, uh, the quality of how they do things declines. So we wondered how this would um, happen in the shopping environment, how multitasking would influence their decisions. So this is what we studied in the latest paper, which is going to be published at Journal of Retailing. Multitasking is doing two things or more things simultaneously at the same time. So in that sense, it's different from being distracted by something, right? You're working in your office or you're doing something and somebody comes and asks you a question. That's an interruption. That's, a, uh, that's something that stops you from doing what you're doing. Or, you know, that's different from uh, something just happening, a loud noise that distracts you from what you're thinking about. Multitasking is purposefully doing two things at the same time. So uh, shopping and speaking on the phone, right? Mindsets are general response styles. They can be instantiated by the decision environment or the decision stage that one is. And in this research, we particularly focus on how uh, versus mind uh, versus why mindsets. And this, uh, this could come from at what stage of the decision are, you are. For example, you might be thinking, should I go on a diet? Um, this, this would, uh, thinking about why you should go on a diet, why you should eat healthy, would put you in a why mindset. Or you might be thinking, okay, I have already decided that I am going to go on a diet. Now what should I do? How should I go about being on a diet? Should I eat more proteins? Should I cut out the carbs? How can I um, practice my diet? What, what should I do to stick to my diet and uh, my goal of eating healthy? So this would put you in a, in a mindset and make you think in a particular way. And these mindsets uh, go beyond the initial tasks that inst instantiated them. And mindsets don't come just from the previous decisions that we have made, but they can come also from the shopping environment. So for example, when you're shopping, you might uh, come across a pamphlet that asks you, uh, what you do to recycle and it could tell you why you should recycle or how you should recycle and thinking about this question that you were confronted with on the pamphlet may put you in a certain mindset and may trigger you to think in a particular way same thing holds for example with ceiling height there being a high versus low ceiling may make you think in particularly different ways and instantiate different thinking styles. Now, when it comes to multitasking, we focused on how versus why mindsets, uh, because why mindsets put people in a uh, in a thinking style where they're open to information, where they look at more information and consider more options, which increases the load of information that they are dealing with. Whereas how mindsets uh, focus people, they make them close-minded and focused on really on the details that, uh, that are relevant to their decision-making. And we wanted to investigate if this increased um, drive for information, increased uh, appeal of information has an impact on getting people to be a bit stressed with this information overload, right? So multitasking uh, puts an increased burden on you. You have to do more things at once than you normally would. And if you then add to this more information that you have to process, this would stress, stress the consumer out. And we would like to see in our research, we investigate if um, this has an impact on their shopping performance. Um, so let me tell you about the key finding of our research. So what we find in a retail environment is that when people are multitasking, if they're in a why mindset, their shopping task performance is poorly affected by that. However, if they're in a how mindset, they can successfully multitask. So that means if you 
uh, come to the shopping environment in a how mindset or if the shopping environment is set up in such a way that it puts you in a how mindset your shopping performance will not be affected by you multitasking you will successfully be able to uh, achieve your shopping goals however uh, it's different if you're in a why mindset in a why mindset if you are multitasking you're not going to be as as successful now we investigated why why this could be and we looked at the effect of task induced stress so we uh, propose that when people are dealing with two tasks at the same time and in their if they're in a why mindset which makes them more open-minded and open to information this could increase their task overload and create task induced stress and uh, we thought this task induced stress could lead to diminished tasks uh, task performance and we studied this in an experimental context where we had people go into a shopping situation either in a how mindset or a why mindset and we had people uh, multitasking throughout and we measured also at the end their stress levels and we show that people who are in a how mindset and who are multitasking can successfully complete the task whereas those people who are in a why mindset cannot successfully complete it because they have high levels of stress. We conducted three experiments uh, and one of them in a in a kind of a field setting and all really following more or less a similar design. So we manipulated mindset in the beginning of the study. We put people either in a how mindset or a why mindset and then we put them in a so shopping situation where they were either multitasking or they were not multitasking. Uh, so we had a two by two between participants experiment and then we gave them a shopping goal. We told them that they needed to uh, go and buy some snacks uh, for a friend who is on a diet. And so we gave them a calorie goal that they had to achieve. This, this friend, for example, in one of our studies, we told them that the snacks had to be less than 500 calories. And then uh, at the end, once people made their snack choices, we looked at their performance. Had they attained the goal of buying snacks less than 500 calories or not? Those people who were in a high how, how mindset, regardless of multitasking or not, were able to do this successfully. However, those people who were in a why mindset uh, were not able to do this successfully if they were multitasking. And once again, uh, we measured task-induced stress. We measured if this whole thing stressed them out and we show that it is a it is a mediator of the relationship meaning that um, in a why mindset when multitasking task induced stress goes up and therefore task performance goes down and in one of the studies the last study of our paper we asked the question in kind of a flipped around way so we wanted to see if we could turn this off right so to the extent that why mindset when you're multitasking makes you stressed out therefore your task performance goes down then if in some way we bring your stress stress levels back down provide you with a coping strategy then would your performance go up? So this was the design of the third study. We put people in a why mindset. We told them either to multitask or not. And then we gave them a stress reduction task. And uh, those people who were in a why mindset, who were engaged in the stress reduction task, and who were also multitasking, went back to baseline levels of task performance. So we re really show that it is the stress. And if you eliminate the stress, you can still multitask when you're in a why mindset. How about the preferences for multitasking, right? Some people say, I love multitasking and I can do it very well. However, there are people who say, I'm not very good at it and I prefer not to multitask. Does that have an impact? And yes, absolutely. Uh, those people who have kind of practice in multitasking, who do this pre frequently and who have a high preference for multitasking are protected from the negative effects of multitasking. So these people do multitask better do uh, perform better even when they are in a why mindset. So what are the key takeaways? What do we learn from this research, right? So I think both consumers and retailers alike can learn from this. First of all, for the consumers, it's important to realize that they can't always successfully multitask. There are situations in which they can multitask. However, they can't always do this. 
and this is a function of their mindset. If they're in a how mindset, they can successfully. However, if they're not in a how mindset, if they're in a why mindset, they can not successfully multitask. Now, this is interesting because for a consumer who's shopping, it's not so easy to diagnose, hmm, what mindset am I in, right? Well, a consumer can't on the spot diagnose their own mindset. So they need to be aware that they can't be optimally multitasking in all kinds of situations, but there's not really a good solution uh, for them to switch themselves, themselves over to a how mindset if they decide to uh, multitask. Now that said, if they become aware that stress is a big factor in their ability to multitask when they're in a why mindset, this they can, they can deal with. They can do something against this. They can do some things that help them relax. Maybe they relax when they're listening to music. Maybe an environment where there's music helps them. For example, there's research that shows that greenery in retail environments help people relax. And this is where the implication for the retailer comes in, right? We're observing that consumers are multitasking. We're observing that they are doing this and their performance may be negatively affected by it if they're in Y mindsets. So creating environments which are reducing the stress levels of the consumers may be one step in uh, towards helping them deal with this. Where is this research headed? So one thing that we point to at the end of our uh, paper and in the discussion section is, you know, most of most multitasking research focuses on the focal task, but not on the alternate task, uh, the secondary task that people are are working on. What happens to performance in this one? Uh, we, we don't really study this very extensively. We have some data showing that performance is very poor on this alternative task as well. Uh, but this would be another direction to pursue to see how people allocate their attention between the focal task and the secondary task that they're trying to do at the same time. And to disentangle this, I think uh, for my colleagues and I, the next step is to maybe study this in a... Um, in, a, in an eye tracking setting. Maybe we can incorporate uh, some additional measures of attention and capture how people are allocating their attention uh, between the two tasks. So here at the Frankfurt School, we have an eye tracking lab where we have um, an eye tracker. We have Toby TX300, which is really a top of the line uh, eye tracker device, which allows us to uh, study uh, consumers attention in a flexible setting with very flexible designs. So I think for us the next step is to take this study and study the attentional mechanism behind what allows people to multitask better when they're in a how mindset and not so well when they're in a why mindset. And of course um, I'd like to invite all interested doctoral students uh, who would like to study this to apply and uh, join the team at the Frankfurt School.